Ah, here we go again. Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. A few weeks ago we did a video about a 6800 XT, so again, I'm gonna level with you guys once more. We've heard every single argument as to why we shouldn't make videos about GPUs, but we're still gonna make them. We're a YouTube channel, we make videos. That's how this works. Now there's this tiny little vocal minority of people who just don't get it. We want to share the performance with you guys for when you will be able to get your hands on these, which at the time of actually putting this video together is available for purchase here in Australia, all right? Not only that, I haven't used a 6900 XT until I wanted to make this video, and I was curious to see how this thing performed in our regular suite of benchmarks. So we did what we always do. We ran through our Windows and Linux benchmarks to see how this card stacks up against some other GPUs. As far as availability of this particular 6900 XT from Gigabyte, from what I've seen here in Australia, there is stock, but that's when we're filming this. So it's anybody's guess, but I'm, I'm gonna guess it's gonna be pretty hard to get. And I can't speak for the rest of the world, but as of filming this video, there are some other 6900 XTs that are actually available on Amazon and Micro Center and all those websites. But the point of this video is really about the performance to cure my own curiosity. This is the first 6900 XT that I've ever used, so that's why we're making this video. With that said, there's a lot of data to unpack with this video as usual, and there's chapters in all of these benchmarking videos, so if you're gonna jump to a certain section of a video, just use that mouse, hover over the progress bar, or check out the timestamps down below in the description. Also, please watch the whole video so you get the context of what I'm trying to say in this video. Now, these are the out of the box figures. Uh, this is kind of the way that we're seeing a trend at the moment, so, for people who want to know how these overclock, we're going to come back to this in a separate video. Uh, there's a few things I want to do first, and there's a certain game that's getting a really big update, so I can script my own benchmarking runs in it. So you know what game I'm talking about. And yeah, we just want to wait for that. And we don't have any 6800s to compare as well, so we never got any of those. So, you know, I mean, no one's got any GPUs, right? Sometimes not even us. Anyways, let's get these benchmarks out of the way. These graphs are weighted based on the performance of the cards that we're not focusing on from our entire database. Now these graphs change because, you know, some cards perform differently, they get knocked off the bottom of the graph, some people don't like it, but, you know, that's what works for us and everyone just complains about everything regardless of what we do anyway, so, yeah. This is our regular test bench hardware. This is what we use to test everything. And we use the same hardware for every single video so the testing results are accurate every single time. So let's jump into Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You can use that magic little pause button to pause this video at any time you like to take a look for those graphs for a little bit longer. The first thing you're probably noticing at 1080p with the Gigabyte 6900 XT is it's one of the fastest cards that we've ever, ever tested. Pretty impressive stuff straight off the bat. As usual with Linux and Vulkan performance, it's better at 1080p with Linux. And this is usually the case as you're seeing with the other cards on this graph as well. If we compare Windows versus Linux performance, again, Linux comes out on top and this is pretty normal for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. At 1440p, we've seen the 6900 XT top the performance once again. If we look at Linux, we're seeing that at 1440p, the 6900 XT is on top once again. And at 1440p, if we compare Windows and Linux, we're seeing that Linux does outperform Windows at 1440p. At 4K, we're seeing the performance coming in behind the RTX 3090. If we do the same test at 4K in Linux, we're seeing the 6900 XT equal the performance of an RTX 3080. All right, let's move on to Unigen Superposition. For the Superposition test, we'll do it the same way we always do, 4K optimized, 1080p extreme, and a custom 1440p preset with met with meth, uh, meth disabled. <laughs> we turned the meth off. <laughs> no meth. No meth. What I meant to say is, with 1440p and depth of field and motion blur turned off. Wow. Anyways, guys, we sometimes get comments along the lines of us using stock open GL versus DX11 for comparison. With the latest AMD drivers in Linux, we're seeing really good performance in general, so that's kind of null. Anyway, let's uh, check out the 1080p Extreme benchmark. This one is highly GPU bound and we're seeing the 6900 XT coming just behind the 3080. 
In Linux at 1080p Extreme, we're seeing the 6900 XT beat out the 3080 by a single frame. Comparing Windows and Linux, you can see that the performance is closer than it's ever been with Superposition. I'm liking this. At 1440p in Windows, the 6900 XT comes in just behind the 3080. But in Linux at 1440p, the 6900 XT is the fastest card that we've tested in Linux. Then if we compare Windows to Linux, we're seeing that for once, Linux is coming out right on top with superposition. Yeah. Woo. Linux performance. At 4K in Windows, we're seeing the 6900 XT come in behind the 3080s. In Linux at 4K, we're seeing the 6900 XT come in behind the 3080 once more. Next up, we've got Basemark GPU. Basemark gives us a great indication of Vulkan performance in both Windows and full Linux as well. At 1080p in Windows, the 6900 XT is significantly faster than the 6800 XT, but slower than the RTX 3080. In Linux at 1080p, the 6900 XT performs slightly faster than the 6800 XT, but actually not by that much. At 1440p in Windows, we're seeing the 6900 XT is much faster than the 6800 XT. In Linux at 1440p, we're seeing the 6900 XT and the 6800 XT are actually pretty close in performance. At 4K in Windows and Linux, we're seeing the same trend that we saw with 1440p. We ran our one hour stress test in Furmark and we couldn't get the Gigabyte 6900 XT Gaming OC above 65 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. Now this result was a lot better than I expected. Uh, the only other time that we've tested this card is with the Meshlicious review and you can check that out in the top right hand corner right now. And I always mention this, but it's super important to note that we're running on an open air test bench. Now the results in a closed system will be different from whatever we recorded here, but we have the results and we have the testing done like this because our open air test environment is consistent with everything that we've ever tested. We decided not to test with smart access memory again because we don't have an X570 test bench set up and we've only seen marginal improvements as well. And we're gonna revisit this whole resizable bar support thing with Z590 and 11th gen Intel CPUs, the PCIe 4.0 because we wanna see what the differences are between using an Intel and AMD chip with PCIe Gen 4 when we can actually do it. But if you've got a Ryzen 5000 CPU, which I suspect most of you won't, there's no harm in enabling it otherwise. You're not missing out on too much. As far as power consumption at idle, it was only drawing around seven watts of power this is so much lower than I thought it would actually draw. And this is really a testament to showing the efficiency with RDNA 2. We observed it hitting a maximum board power draw, maxing out at 264 watts at full load over the period of one hour. And this is considerably lower than I anticipated this to actually be. Now we observed the 6900 XT to be near silent with some audible coil whine in our stress testing period. But you have to remember this is an open air system you hear everything in a closed system, you most likely won't hear this card. The reason why we don't give you acoustic numbers and whatnot is because if I put them on the screen right now, it's not gonna make a whole lot of sense to people who don't understand that stuff. Acoustics are only tangible if the card is sitting right next to you. The Gigabyte 6900 XT Gaming OC uses three PCIe power connectors and it also has an optional BIOS switch for the card to switch between its silent operation mode and the OC operation mode. And everything that we ever test in all of our videos with these switchable BIOSes are always in the OC state. And this card's no exception. We never test in that silent state. The overall size is basically the same as the RTX 3000 based gaming OC cards from Gigabyte. It's about a 2.8 slot card that measures around 286 millimeters in length. It's got RGB on the card too, but it's only on the logo and you can control that in RGB Fusion. It's got the same RGB setup as all the other gaming OC series cards from Gigabyte as well. So 
nothing really ex exciting or spectacular going on with lighting. I mean, it doesn't really matter that much anyway. As far as pricing, the Gigabyte 6900 XT Gaming OC is going for around $1,500 US dollars or around $2,299 at the time of filming, which is obviously subject to availability, which at the time of filming this video is basically zero, except here in Australia, and even that is still hard to come by. And I'm not even gonna really go into the pricing anyway, because right now it's just all these stupid inflating prices, because for some reason, we found ourselves in another mining boom. I thought we were done with mining booms. It's not 2017 or 2018 anymore. Now I'm not gonna in endorse crypto mining at all or using GPUs to mine ether or whatever. I think it's a complete waste of time and a waste of power. If you like mining and you're into it, that's good, but you're taking GPUs away from people who actually want to use them for gaming. That's my thoughts on that. Anyways, what do you guys think about the Gigabyte 6900 XT Gaming OC? I can't wait to get a little bit more time with this to push it a little bit further. Uh, let us know in the comments uh, how much this card's going for in your region, how, how much 6900 XTs are going for in your region. I'm actually pretty curious to see. It's kind of hard to find like cohesive pricing. So if you guys can just blast all the pricing that you can find in the comments, I want to go through it all. And I want to see if you guys are getting as hosed as we are in the pricing department. And I suspect it's, it's going to stay this way for the next six or so months. This is exactly what happened in 2017 and 2018. It was an absolute mess. And I'm really done with this mining shit. Please just stop this. Anyways, if you guys like this video, please like and subscribe. If you hated the video, hit the dislike button twice. If you want to know what the music is, I make all the music. It's available over on Patreon. You want to get early access to videos like this one, head on over to Floatplane. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. And I, 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 I'm just so annoyed that this mining stuff's happening again because it, it not only impacts like you guys being able to buy cards, it makes everything more expensive. It makes it harder for us to actually do our jobs and give you guys content that you want to see. It's just a fucking mess. Stop with this mining shit.